just to get them to commit to that light once they see it. It's not as easy as it looks on your show. That's absolutely 100%. But the thermal, you know, that's, that's game changing. I would have never thought that a guy would have ever, ever came into that freight train light you got. It looks like when we crossed the tracks the other night, it looks like that train coming down the track. Hold him up. That Rico, it's special. It is legit. What do you think about that? Now that I've had exposure to it, for me personally, it's going to change the way I approach these at night. I'm gonna have me one, I promise you. You know, it's not hard as a Texas boy to get spoiled on what we get to do at home. We oftentimes forget everyone and everywhere else ain't quite as lucky. But slowly by surely, a handful of states are beginning to come around and see things our way, the Texas way, and open the doors to hunting coyotes at night. They may not let you kill them from a truck just yet, but you gotta start somewhere. And as of January of this year, the great state of Kansas has given hunters and ranchers what they've been asking for. Simply a way to rid of a problem after dark using night vision equipment and lights. For them, this is huge. It's the first baby step to hopefully lead to broader horizons. The Kansas commissioners were opening up the night hunting to be able to use lights and thermals and all that stuff here in Kansas. It was a, an awesome idea. You know, some other states in this area obviously already have it, but, uh, you know, like in South Dakota, it was, uh, wasn't that long ago and they got it. You know, they went about it the right way, and I think we did too. I really hope it evolves into where it's a longer season, maybe where it's open when fur bear season's open and you can actually take fox and bobcat and whatnot. But as far as... Uh, the aspect of helping people with livestock, whether it be chickens, goats, cows, hogs, whatever, it's absolutely gonna help with depredation because they are a nuisance. When you're talking about a, a calf that just hit the ground, well, there's potentially $1,000 right there. Boom, gone. You know, he just turned into a turd over there on the gravel road. That hurts people's wallets and it hurts our economy as a whole. I mean, because Kansas farmers and ranchers, they feed the nation. We're one of the leading producers in, in beef. And this area is, as you guys have seen, is chock full of cattle and hogs. And uh, not talking about feral hogs like Texas either. But uh, I think it's absolutely a fantastic deal. I just hope it, they see enough interest in it from the permit sales that will move forward and expand upon it. Old Jamie reached out to us on Facebook earlier this year, looking to get advice on thermal in the beginning because he knew very little about it. I could tell he was the type of guy we could probably enjoy hunting with. Then one thing led to another, and before we knew it, we were in Kansas. For him, it was a way to get his first experience using thermal. And for us, it was a way to bring what we do at home in Texas with lights. To show him firsthand, it'll work there too with the right animal. Anytime you travel to a new place like this, you never really know what to expect. You really don't know the history of calling pressure in areas possibly seen prior to you getting there. And you really don't know how they'll react once the light hits them. But I felt in my gut, if we could just get one single coyote to play our game, it would confirm in my mind what I already suspected. And that was the right coyote in the right place would act just like they do back home. But at this early stage, it hadn't been proven yet. 
I really wanted Jamie to get to see it work just once so he can see what's possible with lights on the right animal. But it looks like this one might take a little convincing. Let's give him something I don't think he can resist. Well, that got his attention. Let's see if we can get him to break loose. Well, that did it. I usually wouldn't stop this coyote where we did, but he was getting pretty close to downwind. The night hunting deal in Kansas at this stage in the game is pretty much a trial phase or test run just to see how it goes this first year. But I truly feel once the Kansas commissioners see what's possible at night, in the end, the good will outweigh the possible bad that may come with it. It's exactly what it is. It's a test run and we're gonna see how it's gauged out. So I encourage everybody from Kansas to, every, all my buddies have got them. I've got one for my wife and all my kids, whether they use it or not. I just wanted to he go ahead and, and uh, you know, sweeten the pot a little bit, you know, that way they can see more uh, interest in it, you know. Matt told me on the way up here, a friend of his from Kansas told him that Kansas is the only place you can watch your dog run away from home for two days, which is true because some of it's flat as a pancake, but parts of here have some of the most beautiful rolling hills and creeks my eyes have ever seen. We were in the more eastern part of the state and some of the terrain we went through getting there was absolutely gorgeous. And the nighttime sky just speaks for itself. The state motto is Ad Astra Paraspera, which means through hardships to the stars. But if it were up to me, I'd probably change it to something a little more fitting. It's just a thought. We were no doubt in God's country. I reached out to you guys because I'd watched your show several times and seen the, all the footage you had of thermal and, and with the, the lights and everything. And I wanted some uh, tips and tactics of ways to increase our success of uh, killing coyotes. Just to get them to commit to that light once they see it, you know, it, it's, uh, it's not as easy as it looks on your show. That's absolutely 100%. But the thermal, you know, that's, that's game changing. It's a whole different approach and aspect to it. it. It just broadens what we were already doing where we can move forward and have more success, in my opinion. I would have never thought that a guy would have ever, ever 
came into that freight train light you got. That looks like when we crossed the tracks the other night, it looked like that train coming down the track. That light you got is, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> One critical part of hunting with lights, in my opinion, no matter where you're at in the country, is choosing the right size openings to shine. One thing we've learned over time is calling coyotes into close ranges with lights gets much more difficult with the bigger the space you're in. In fact, back home, we actually try and steer clear of trying to film in areas that naturally give them too much opportunity to circle for wind. We've seen it so many times where one's coming on a string into the light from five to 600 yards away. And right about the time he gets into decent shooting range, he stops and begins to circle for wind because he easily can. Now, I'm not saying it can't be done with lights in big giant fields like this. It's just much more difficult when they have such easy access to your wind and they have a lot of open ground between you and them to go get it. My suggestion for someone using lights exclusively in Kansas and not thermal is to try your best to keep your openings under 300 yards or so, if you have that option, rather than posting up in huge half-mile alfalfa fields like we are here. We got real lucky with this one, but to fool a bunch of them, you can't expect them all to come 800 yards on a string into a light the entire time. That's asking a lot, even out of a dumb one. If you're in parts of Kansas where you just have no choice but to hunt big areas like this, the absolute best advice I can give you to be the most effective is to save up and buy a Rico and go totally dark. You'll kill way more coyotes instead of trying to force using lights. You'll still get several wanting to circle for wind in these big giant fields, but forcing them to think about that light for long periods of time just complicates an already tricky situation even more. And to even further complicate it, if you're running just lights in big areas, you can count on having several coyotes you get to respond to the call that made a big giant loop around you that you never even saw. We've literally been on stands in places like this where the guy on the light never saw one set of eyes, yet we actually called up 8 to 10 coyotes. He just never saw them. That's the advantage thermal gives you in big fields. And I'd bet my last dollar all the guys out there already running thermal on stuff like this, they know I'm telling it like it is because they've seen it as well. We weren't sure what this one kept smelling, but it wasn't us. There was a certain spot that hung him up every single time. We figured it was probably another coyote or even a badger he was smelling. But whatever it was, was keeping him from coming all the way up this hill. It was like he would hit a brick wall, then take a few whiffs and say, nope, too rich for my blood. We actually had a young neighbor of our falconer friend Titus with us on this night. Titus is from Kansas, so while we were there flying the birds, we figured, what the heck, let's run out and make a few stands. And his neighbor's son, Corey, really wanted to tag along. He's a great kid who we figured would love night hunting. So we took him out for a few stands to show him a thing or two about the game. And from what we could tell, he had an absolute blast. That's what it's all about right there, people. Teach a kid how to hunt at night. The best thing you can do for them, keep them out of trouble. I was really impressed when I heard what kind of overwhelming response the Kansas Game Commission received from residents across the state in favor of passing night hunting legislation. My biggest hope is other states will eventually follow suit once they see the advantages this move brings for hunters and landowners as well. 
I'm sure some folks won't like it no matter what you say or do, but in the end, legislative changes made to positively impact the majority and not the minority is what really matters. I firmly believe once other states start seeing the good that comes from the changes Kansas made, that same proposal will eventually be up for debate as well in their own state to give landowners the ability to do what needs to be done to protect their livelihood. But only time will tell. sound of that. Before this permit was available this year, if you had a predator problem and like say they were coming and getting your goats and this and this, yes, you could go out and get after them after dark. To do it legally, you had to get a hold of your county commissioners and prove to them, which all our county commissioners are absolutely fantastic guys, and you tell them they're gonna go, yeah, here you go, I'm gonna sign you a permit. There you go, your depredation permit, move forward. You know, you're wasting my time with that, you know, stuff like that. So it's opened it up where I don't have to go get that permit to be able to help a, a rancher out or a farmer out or a lady that's they came and killed her house cats. Essentially what this has done is give guys with the right equipment much more easy access and ability to take care of a problem. And if you think about it, that's what good legislation is supposed to do. Benefit the people in their community. I guess the way I see it, if most of your state's laws regarding night hunting were created long before the time of thermal equipment that's extremely safe and extremely effective, why would you not approach your state and say, hey, this is what we can do with today's technology. Give us the ability to utilize it like all the other states and Kansas just did. As far as here in Kansas, I sure hope night hunting's here to stay. Like I said, it's going to help your ag producers with livestock and whether it's goats, chickens, beef, or hogs, it's going to help. Uh, one less coyote that could become a nuisance won't. And if you do have a nuisance, it gives you another avenue of eradicating the problem. Uh, I really hope it's here to stay. I hope when they see the permit sales and gauge that, that it's good. And I hope that everybody's trying to do the right thing. That way we can move forward to this and, and maybe expand it more where it's maybe open during fur bear season. Maybe it's closed during deer rifle season or something like that. But uh, you're always going to have bad actors. And uh, I just hope that uh, law enforcement and the commissioners see it that way, that we can expand upon it. I found that lots of people in the positions to enact those kind of changes simply need to be informed on what kind of technology is available to the average hunter these days. If they're never educated by someone who understands it, they'll never even realize the old laws are possibly dated and needing change. I personally think Kansas took a step back and realized through numerous requests, maybe we need to take a look at our old laws and restructure them to fit today's capabilities. And like Jamie said, you're always gonna have bad actors no matter what the laws say. So why penalize good hunters and landowners when there's a reasonable solution available to help them rid of their problem? Any way you slice it, laws are only good for the people who actually follow them. And withholding those changes only for fear of what the bad actors might possibly do, that only hurts the people with a legitimate need for change and not the lawbreakers. So give good law-abiding people what they need to do what they need to do. I know all the Kansas boys are in for a real treat once they experience this side of hunting coyotes. For them, it's an entire new world just waiting to be discovered. As for Jamie, I think we thoroughly convinced him he needed thermal by the end of this trip, and I could tell he really wanted a Rico, so I had to mess with him just a little before we left. You think the boss is actually going to let you get one? I believe my boss will probably let me get one once I... Uh, you have to put in a request for that? or Yes, I do. I have to put in a work order and a PO number. And it'll be probably she'll get a, something, a new diamond. I don't know. You know, something of equal, preferably lesser value. <laughs> but 
<laughs> that last night got a bit tough on us, but I really wanted Jamie to kill his first coyote with thermal. So the very last stand of the trip, we put him behind the Rico to experience it firsthand. Up to that point, he'd never once shot our 243, and his first go around was taking a poke at one at almost 250 yards away. Things got tough last night, and we went to several of our, uh, what I'd call honey holes. When we finished out the night with that last one where we called in, they were already downwind of us and everything. What was it, 249 yards? That Rico zoomed in, boom, it was done. And it's the definition of it. When that bullet hit it, it was just fantastic to me. It made me, it, it pumped me up again. That Rico, it's, it's special. It is legit. And uh, now that I've had exposure to it, I'm absolutely gonna purchase one. I think there's several of my friends that will save up a little coin and uh, purchase one. And that's the thing is, if, if we'd have had my buddies, Tim and Tyler with us, they'd already be going, ha, ah, we gotta get one now, you know, cause they would have seen how the world opens up. This was a successful trip in our eyes, as we gave a great guy who was eager to learn a glimpse into our world that'll no doubt impact how he approaches hunting at night in the future. He learned some about lights, but more importantly, what he was really after. That thermal signature is just so impressive to me that for me personally, it's gonna change the way I approach these at night. Now regarding the PO and work order with the boss, Jamie, I hate to break it to you, but you're on your own on that one, buddy. I'm gonna have me one, I promise you. <laughs>